Hey everyone, breaking news. There's a big announcement that came out talking about a new hair loss cure. Is it for real or is it just another treatment or is it complete hogwash? Let's talk about it. Welcome and um, I hope you are sitting down because uh, this is an unusual event uh, on a couple of levels. Um, it's an unusual event because uh, I'm I just recorded this video tonight, December 7th, 2025, in response to some announcements I've been seeing about a new product that's being touted, touted as a hair loss cure. Um, it just finished phase three trials. Um, so the, the descriptive of what happened during this trial, the, the results, the outcome on the surface are imp amazing, impressive to say the least. Amazing, impressive, to say the least. What is that claim? Well, the exact claim is that this product, uh, which is called Closcoterone, uh, that's the um, active ingredient name, 5% solution, um, created a 539% better growth than placebo, or that, that's a claim, that there was a 539% better growth than the placebo in this phase three trial. And... Um, a lot of claims, people are talking about this. It's all of the socials being touted as a cure. Um, there's a couple of guys on, uh, YouTube that already have a video out talking about this being a cure. Um, I need to get, just get this out of the way. It's not a cure. It's a treatment. If it was a cure, you wouldn't have to take, it's not a cure. It's a treatment. If it, if it was a cure, you wouldn't have to take it every day or, you know, every couple of days. If you want to maintain your hair, it would be done. Like you take it a few times. It fixes the issue at, at the core baseline. You're done. It's cured. That's not what this is. It is a treatment. Now, um, that is simply to debunk the the claims, the, the clickbait that you're seeing. Um, so with that out of the way, it's still impressive. A 539% better growth than, than placebo claim. But that too is a surface level uh, claim that you need to be aware of. So uh, we'll dive that into the, dive into that in a second, but I just want to let let you know. Right. Okay. So here we go. Um, so this is this is the image that was released from the study, and on the left hand side you can see uh, the first visit uh, visit one screening, and then on the right hand side the two same patients seven months later. And let's see if I can make this larger. So <clears throat> this patient here on the top left, you compare over on the top right. And down the middle of the scalp, you don't see a lot of difference, okay? In the crown, you do see a significant improvement. And I don't know why that is. I, I will say this. Uh, this continues to support my idea that uh, researchers take the worst photos on the planet. This still looks like it was done with a film camera. Uh, and it was done with flash photography, which you should not do. Um, but that's, not, that's a discussion for another time. But I want you... But I want you to look at this bottom patient, um, bottom left here. Looks like he has actual diffuse loss. And then you look over here on the right-hand side, he's still thin, but that is a marked improvement. More so than, than the, the first patient up top. And this is seven months. This was a 5% solution. I believe it was applied daily. Um, and there, there are actually two, two separate groups during this trial. There's scalp one and scalp two. That's how they label the, the two different um, groups that were being studied at the same time. Uh, total number of, of patients was 1,465 adult men with male pattern hair loss. And it was a proper study, randomized, double blind, vehicle controlled. For example, it's compared against a placebo vehicle, uh, presumably the same topical base, but without the active drug with a six month double blind treatment period followed by a six month extension. Um, primary endpoints, target area, hair count, objective count of hairs. In a sp and one of the things that kind of concerns me about this is that in the, um, the two separate studies or the, the two separate groups, there's a wide variance of differences. Uh, in one group, there's the 539% increase in efficacy or um, uh, increase in growth compared to placebo. And the other group, it was only 168%. So still impressive. But why, why was there such a, a wide variance between the two, uh, two groups? 
it's not explained. There's a lot, a lot of detail missing out on this. Um, most importantly, what's missing is the, uh, the actual hair counts themselves. And I want, I want you guys to, to keep this in mind that when you're reading this, when you're looking at this and getting excited, keep in mind that it could be a difference of one group. The placebo group had two hairs in, in the given area uh, on placebo after six months, which, which is more than possible. I mean, the, it, it could be much higher than that uh, on placebo because of variations in growth cycles and uh, all kinds of, of factors that go into this. Whereas the other group that had the actual medication would have had maybe 12 new hairs, not a whole lot of difference. I mean, as far as the numbers go, percentage wise, huge, but not as far as what you guys are looking for visible hair growth. Can you see a difference now with these two examples that um, I just put up on the screen, they saw a difference and I can only assume that this image is showing at worst uh, the average outcome, but my gut is telling me that they actually use the best outcome. So gut is telling me that they actually use the best outcome. So sorry for being a, a downer on this. I just, I, I feel like I've, I've been doing this for a long time and I feel like it's necessary to keep expectations low. Okay. And it's better to be pleasantly surprised in the end than uh, drastically disappointed in the end. So um, that's, that's why I, I talk like, so I'm going to put this back up here because I, I know you guys want to look at this again um, and you'll see this image uh, everywhere else um, soon if you haven't already. Like I said, I'm, I don't know if it's out there anywhere else. I found this in a, I did a deep dive trying to find images and I finally found one um, that, I, that was not presented originally. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling because this is not planned. This is not scripted. And I do apologize for that. But the good news from this is, you know, if, if, if even this is the best it can provide, it's still an important development in the fight against hair loss because um, that's a good finasteride result. Not just stopping loss, but reversing it to an extent where if you want to have surgery in the future, fewer grafts are needed, saving money. Uh, the patient at the top, uh, that would be a, the, the type of improvement where it would make most patients question whether they want to have surgery or not to begin with. And most doctors probably wouldn't even work on uh, this result with surgery anyway for fear of damaging the, the native hair. But the good news about this is that um, we're talking about FDA approval in just a few years. Yes, it's, it's, it's still a few years away, but they are submitting uh, for review by FDA to clear this or to approve this for hair loss at 5% based on, on their study. Now, again, everything that's out there right now is put out by the pharmaceutical company, uh, by Cosmo um, or Cassiopeia, which, which is the, I think it was Cassiopeia, which is their subsidiary in Italy. Um, again, just going off memory here. Um, but basically Cosmo Pharmaceuticals announced this. It's all their information curated for clicks curated for attention, stock prices, whole nine yards, nothing new there. But what is new is it's an effective treatment. That, that much is, is clear. We're seeing that. Um, they have some big expectations to fulfill and um, it's exciting. Uh, this is the first time I've been excited um, for some of you that, that, um, that don't know, that didn't watch the show on Friday, uh, The Bald Truth. Um, I have recently started taking oral minoxidil because I, I decided I wanted to up my game on my hair loss regimen, my, my hair loss stack. So I'm presenting this to you because I think it's important to talk about, um, but I also want to temper your expectations. Don't fall for the, the clickbait with the cure and all that nonsense. It's not a cure. It's not even available yet. Um, they've not even submitted for FDA approval yet, but they will be doing it soon according to their announcement. And the 539% improvement number. We have no idea what that means. It could be the difference between two hairs in placebo group versus 12 hair in the, in the, um, and the, um, uh, close cat, uh, close scatteron, close scatteron group. Sorry. It's hard. It's difficult to say. Um, but here we are. So, um, 
follow this channel. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Uh, let me know what you think about this down in the comments and um, hit, hit the like on this video because I'd love for this to get out there uh, so that people can get you know some real information to, to not expect a cure. Uh, help me spread the word. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.